fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use, so sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or carp, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong, they'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, big show coming to you tonight, I've got to tell you. Lots of news, lots of events. We're going to talk about a lot of events tonight. And I'll tell you what, a remarkable thing. Better Boating Victoria, they've turned the corner. Oh, hello. No, there's mailbag about praise yeah. for the work that yep. Catherine is doing on Better Boating Victoria. Good work. And uh, some of the boat ramps that they're going to deliver. We're going to talk about that all tonight. It's a big show. Ads. When are we getting some warm weather? Uh, it's going to be warm tomorrow. Yeah. It was warm in Shepparton today, wasn't it? Yeah, reasonably warm. It was cold tonight, coming yeah. into town. Yeah, it's been funny. 19, they reckon 19 What's degrees. It? it was cold. It was supposed yeah. to be early 30s I'm tomorrow. Over it. It's dropping to 9 tonight. Yeah, tonight. yeah. but I've got to say, um, some really good fish caught this week. Yes, like, yeah. Like, it's like, um, is this the first week where they've really turned on? Lots of snapper caught. so. Mm -hmm. Lots of good sized fish. Yeah, I hope so. Mm. We just need a few of those sessions now where they go completely That's it. off their heads. Yeah. We need to call out those fish and say, ignore the temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> well, truly, that's put a jacket thing. On. So, um, you know, I, f I haven't fished for two weeks. Mm -hmm. We had 17.2 degrees. No one's getting um, 17s now. You know, it's 15s yeah. and 15s. 16s again. Yeah, that's so right. You went out on last Monday, didn't you? Sun la not the Sunday just gone, the one before. And we had 15.7 or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's cold. Saying, global warming isn't happening quick enough. I'm not allowed to mention global warming here. Oh, just environmental warming. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, you've been doing some interesting stuff on environmental flows too, haven't you? Are we allowed to mention that? Uh, uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, having a little bit of a... Um, there's the next uh, you know, the, but the sunset clause type of situation where the environmental flows get looked at again. Mm. Um, we've got a few changing uh, environments up our way, lower Goulburn River, mm. because we've got some other influences as far as water delivery... You know, downstream, so yep. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Someone said to me the other day, a very wise man said to me, yep. the reason the cod population is so good in the Yarra River yeah. is because it's a natural flowing river, it's untouched. Yeah. Wouldn't be too many untouched rivers in Victoria, would there? No, I think the the, uh, the Yarra is one, like yep. I say, is dammed, um, and the Uppens is probably the only oh, other yeah. one. Not, okay. not regulated by not. environmental oh, so that, that's, and... That's not yeah. influenced by the environmental flows? Yeah, exactly, yeah, so that's oh, another one. Where does the Uppens flow that. from? Uh, Myrtleford Way, yeah. yeah, through the hills, probably. Um, th th there's an offshoot which is the Lake Buffalo there, okay. but the ovens actually runs up the other way towards Harrodville and that sort of thing. Oh, okay, yeah. there you go. Nice. Natural rivers should be more of it. Uh, folks, let's have a look at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. Now, I tell you what, this isn't the only school shark to turn up in Catch of the Week this week. Oh, Well, it is. It's the only one I'm going to show on TV. Oh. But <laughs> um, but plenty of them sent in. There's some schoolies. Yeah, being, heard uh, of a few bite-offs too. Around every, all in Western Port. Yep. But have a look at this. Gavin Swan, the corals. Lovely 15 kilo school shark. And we might even show it <laughs> to you at some stage. There, there we go. go. Swanny. Uh, on nice. your swanny, yeah. Don't accidentally mistake him on them for a gummy shark because you no. wouldn't want to put your hand in his mouth. No. no. There you go. Just That's saying. Right. Yeah, nice, nice fish. fish. Yeah. Bit of meat on that one. <coughs> uh, staying in Western Port, great, um, <coughs> great numbers and size, I must say, of King George Whiting coming out of Western Port at the yeah, moment. Yeah, this has been an interesting one because we've had a few people asking how the whiting are going and mm. it's been hard to answer through the shop because you yeah. don't know whether they've slowed down or if people have just gone snapper mad and only chasing people them. People have got snapper yeah. goggles on. Mm. But have a look at this. Paul Sabo got out. King George Whiting, every fish well over 40 centimetres nice. off Hastings. Good job. Mm. They're good fish, aren't they? You can yeah, tell they're... They look yeah. how fat they are. They yeah. always taste them, don't yeah. you? Yeah. No, they're good yeah. fish. Yeah. All right. Um, not a lot... More out of Western Port, I've got to say, Port Phillip's really been on fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's kick it off with Rye. I think it's seven metres of water, young Destiny. Good went fish. out fishing Ash, obviously back at the ramp here, but seven metres of water off mm -hmm. Rye, some lovely stuff. the snapper. shallows, seven metres. Yeah. Mm. yeah I not like too, it. Not too far out. Nice fish. Uh, the chairman of the Future Fish Foundation, a good friend of mine, Michael Buxton, oh, yeah. uh, went out, what's today? Tuesday? Yep. 
went out yesterday. Mm. Have a look ah. at the snapper off Ansets. Mount Eliza. That's a good fish. So yeah. nice. How big was that? I don't know. I don't think you weighed it. Looks. Even though it's a it's brand a, new set of scales sitting in the cabinet. It's a good one. About seven kilo. Yeah. I'm yeah, guessing. it's a good fish. It's a good yep. fish. Uh, well done to Michael. Um, well played, very, sir. very good fish. Mm -hmm. Young Jake, he went out uh, early, I think before school. Young Jake That's and right. got That's some more snapper off yep. uh, Mount Eliza again. So Mount Eliza seems to be yeah, doing a right. spot. You, and you can take the frame to show and tell. Probably could. At school. Yeah. So we ate the rest of it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's popped up a bit in Port Phillip. This is a cool one. Yeah. So, well, Michael actually got two yep. yesterday. Yep. In amongst the Gummy snapper. sharks in amongst just the normal, you know, where people are fishing Mount for snapper. I know that's not unusual, but um, yeah, Mount Eliza. Have a look at this. Mark Lambert, a lovely gummy shark off Mount Eliza. Ooh. Nice. And uh, What sort of depth of water are they? Because I know Mount Eliza is typically a pretty deep. 15, 16 metre line yeah. type arrangement. Yep. Do you keep them that small? Yeah. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Don't they're, big, they're bigger than the Golden River gummies, I can tell you. <laughs> um, oh, no, but anyway, no. well done, Mark. That's, that's a nice fish. Like yeah. uh, let's head a little bit down the track to Mornington, not too far away. Tony Sharp, a lovely snapper off Mornington. Well done to Tony. Yep. Um, there's some good fish around. Rough day there. Yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> Look at the background. Yeah. yeah. Would have pretty had right. the quells that day, I think. <laughs> Would have needed it. I'd need them. Um, now, this is the time of year where we're going to start to see some nice flathead caught in Port Phillip Bay. So they always say, like, start of December normally. Mm. So as that water temperature comes up, these fish are sitting in the shallows. Some lovely blue spot or yank flathead. Mm. Uh, Maddie O'Loughlin got out off indented head over near your shop in Geelong there, Charlie. Yep. And a lovely blue slot, blue spot. I think that one went 54 centimetres. Oh, a couple of on that. Yeah. It's a great time of year because you can actually go out and target them. Yeah, that's here. right. Yep. And, um, mm. and get yourself a good fit. Get yeah. 10 or whatever. Nice right. fish, Matty. Yeah. Just get up on the sand flats. Get the plastics just, out on them. Plastics? Yeah. Just, what, just like shake Bounce the Bounce them off tip. the bottom. Shake the rod tip and wind up the loose don't line. Have to, don't have to be finesse. That's why flatties yeah. are so good. They don't care. Oh, just drag just it past their face. But and often with these fish... Burly too. Yes. You know, like, oh, right, yeah. like anchor, burly, yep. the flat, they'll just come into your trail. Yeah. Okay. They just love it and then yep. just work plastics up your trail. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. Um, oh. A couple of these for sure. <laughs> yeah. too. They have and we've got, we got some, we got some um, stories to tell about these later on in the night in Fisheries News. Oh, hello. The old Mulloway. Dominic Rako got a 15 kilo Mulloway oh, that's somewhere awesome. around Port Melbourne. Yep. Can, it's a bit hard to tell what's in the background there, but yep. Dominic, lovely fish. Aren't they just gorgeous? Have fish? you ever eaten Mulloway? I haven't. Either have I. I haven't, yeah. but one of the few Do species... you eaten it, Kelly? Yeah, I have. I went fishing once and this guy said, we're going to eat once? Mulloway. Well, once when I caught Mulloway. Oh. They, they, we're going to eat Mulloway and I'm, I was actually looking forward to them eating Mulloway. Hmm. Uh, as in, I'm one of those pure guys that just put on a hot plate with yeah. a bit of butter, a bit yeah. of salt and pepper. Come out in a curry, didn't it? Oh, oh no. So you didn't get to taste what it, ta what it actually yeah, tastes like. It might have been carp. Like, yeah, it could have been anything. Yeah. Bass. I know. No. So, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. Oh, now, this is a special photo. Donnie. Yes, Donnie today. Newman. Well, I can't believe we got this wrong. Well, he's not 97. Don's not 97. He oh. celebrated his 70th birthday not so long ago. Oh. And we always thought he was 97. You told us that. But 97 is a very important number tonight. Because have a look at this at yeah. Lake Eildon, not far from Jerusalem Creek Lake. Look at that. A 97 centimetre Murray oh. Cod. Well done to Don yeah. Newman. Look how happy he is. Now that's a fish. <laughs> look at that. That's Charlie, a that fish. Is, it's a that's slab. a trophy, isn't it? That's a trophy. It's that's a, a cracker. Donnie, I'll tell you what, mate. You come up to my sort of end of the world, you know, you get a, something that you can take a photo of and put on the wall. Now, that's not the first time Don's caught a fish that no, big Donnie's got in a Lake Eildon. And... I walked into work this morning and the ads I said, Donny got a 97 on a budgie smuggler. And you said, <laughs> you called me bull dust, except yep, you yeah. said the other word. And I said, yep, bull dust. Yeah. Because you said, <laughs> let me guess, you just trolled a stump jumper. He just, that's exactly that's what, what he did. Donny does. It's Donny's go to. And yeah, actually, you know what? And he we can't knock him because he, he catches, catches more 97 centimetre cod than the three of us put together. Oh, it leaves yeah. another hand free for the stubby holder. Yeah. 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 Great way of fishing. Um, Good on you, Donny. Let's talk about Let's talk about cod. Later on, because mm. it yeah, is some questions for you. Yeah. On this too. Uh, if you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, like Don, this is what you have to do.
If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pic to info at ifish.com.au. Go, go pies! Yeah, I want to go fishing. Coming up next, fisheries news, including how to have your say on boat ramp designs next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing We know what you'd rather be doing We know what you've really got in mind We know you'd rather be out fishing And today's the day you're gonna wet a line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. Now boys, uh, lots of things to do with your time when you're not fishing at the moment. There's a lot well, of things. It's <laughs> pretty good because the weather's been pretty horrible. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Good at the moment, today was good. Yeah. But when it gets warm, what, the next couple of days is going to blow a gale, isn't it? Yeah, it's strong. Yeah, 80 knots or something, so anyway. 80. <laughs> Pretty weird. All right, um, let's get into it. Uh, the first one is, this is on tomorrow night, an event tomorrow night, if you live over this way. Point Richards Boat Ramp is getting an upgrade. Uh, Better Boat in Victoria is running a drop-in session about the project. If you want to hear about the plans and have a say, then come along. This is on tomorrow night. 3 o'clock till 6 o'clock at the Port Arlington Parks Hall, 87 Newcomb Street, Port Arlington 3223. Now, if you can't make it, because we know that's short, um, short notice, mm. this is just for the local residents, right? If, they, if you live there, you've got time tomorrow night, go, right? Yep. But if you haven't got time and you visit Point Richards regularly for your holidays or you want to just go there at some other mm. time, there will also be a drop-in for Point Richards on Saturday the 30th, so which is not this weekend, but next. next. Yep. Yep. So, But there is something on tomorrow night at uh, Port Arlington Parks Hall, if you want to go to that. Nice. Um, this is, wait till we get to Kramer's Marbeg. The people are raving about the consultation that Better Boating are, are doing, so it's good to see. Next one, real boating facility upgrade. Um, there is an event on 22nd, which I think is this Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Real Boating Facility is getting an upgrade. Better Boating Victoria is running a community event about the project. So if you want to see some draft plans and have a say in building a better facility, then come along. Now, I've seen some of the draft plans. Well, Friday. Uh, Must be. If the 30th is a Saturday. Friday. Well, the 20th is tomorrow. Oh, yeah, Friday night. There you go. So... For, I'll bet you Charlie's sitting at home yelling at her TV. Yeah. Going, Friday. It's Friday. We got, we got there eventually. It's, Friday. it's all good. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> I could hear you from wherever you live. 4pm oh. to 7pm, Rill Phillip Island Angling Club. Beach Road in Rill, if you want to have a say. There's some really good plans for that. And, Rill. Um, Was that a pun? Really? really? Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's good. Um, the upgrade will deliver a safer boating facility that will provide a better launching experience, improve traffic flows, Improved pedestrian safety and more parking, and that's the key. Not, and you can get your boat in. Not like Coronella. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Someone oh. had to say it. Oh. 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 I was going to steer clear of that. No, yeah. the one on Friday night, I'll just read in the notes here yeah. from Charlie, there will be a barbecue and refreshments available. Probably, probably not the alcohol. top. Probably not the top. The Red Trelly Spectacular in we, Shepparton. Wow. Well, How many slabs you go through? 69. And 10 litres of tuna oil. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but there will be barbecue and refreshments available, yeah. as well as interactive boating and fishing education and safety displays for all the family. So that's this Friday night. I have a read of this, boys. Mulloway. Yeah. We're right. just talking about this. This is a media release from the Victorian Fisheries Authority. Mulloway movement mysteries are revealed. Oh, hello. Well, some of them. All right, that's the headline. Mm -hmm. So uh, your recreational fishing licence fees are funding a two-year study by the Nature... Glenelg Trust that is revealing amazing secrets about the movement of Mulloway in and between our rivers, bays and beaches. Aquatic ecologist with the Nature Glenelg Trust, Lauren Brown, said volunteer fishers have tagged nearly 500 mm. Mulloway in the Glenelg uh, there's 308 in Patterson River 34, in the Hopkins 23, in the Yarra 25. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in the Barwon 17, the Moyne Rivers 2, and six beaches at Portland, Geelong, and Western Port. So nearly wow. 500 yeah. Mulloway have been tagged. How unbelievable is that? That is so good. Now, some of the results starting to come through. More than half of the re oh, eight, sorry, 80, ta 80 tagged Mulloway have been recaptured, yep. right? More than half the recaptures, 55 of them, have been in the same estuary the fish was initially tagged in and released in. And the greatest distance travelled was in the Glenelg River, where a Mulloway swam 24 kilometres yep. from the town bridge to Saplings Creek in 90 days. Yeah. He's gone. Wow. Yeah. But I could ask the question. Yeah. Do they know if they're male or female that they've tagged? Because... <laughs> why? Because why, Charlie? Why? <laughs> It depends on what time of the year. If it's breeding season, a male would probably travel further. Oh, well, okay, let me, f can you let me finish? I'll, right. I'll go over here. In August, a 105 centimetre tagged Mulloway was caught in the Glenelg River. It was originally tagged at 89.5 centimetres back in December 2018 near the Glenelg's mouth. The fish had grown 15 and a half centimetres in 217 days, which is the second fastest growth rate, which is 0 0.07 centimetres per day, observed in the Glenelg so far. And some more interesting facts. On Melbourne's doorstep. Yep. Right? Oh, you get We're going to get in trouble, Dave. You talk about We're going to get in trouble. Leave soon, <laughs> On Melbourne's doorstep, a tagged Mulloway was caught at the mouth of the Yarra River. Right? So it was caught yep. in the mouth of the Yarra River. Yep, yep. It has been, it had been tagged more than a year before in the Patterson River. Oh, yeah. In its Mail. in its four, <laughs> it's probably going to a Collingwood game. In its 427 days at Liberty, it had grown 14 centimetres from 66 to 80 centimetres. How good's yeah. that? And then more oh, facts on this is good stuff. Uh, this is the second Mulloway to move from the Pato to the Yarra's mouth, and represents the only between estuary movements documented in the study so far. Oh, well, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Right they with the two. Right with the two that were tagged in one river. In the morning. They stayed there. Yeah. There's a boy and girl. They've, no, happy. they haven't been recaptured. They lived happily ever after. Yeah. <laughs> Mary had a little hand. <laughs> Male. All right. Man. There's a couple more events that are coming up that when you're not fishing, go to, go to these. Mm. Look at the first one. is on this weekend, Trelly. Yep. Uh, it's the Talk Wild Trout. 2019 conference. It's up in Mansfield. There's all the details on your screen. This Saturday, uh, 9.30 start till 4 p.m. There's lunch provided. You need to register on the website. There you go, it's for free, but you need to um, register because I need to know how many sandwiches to make. That's right. Mm -hmm. And how many cans of Coke Zero to provide mm. and lemonade and water. And how many cakes and scones for yeah. morning tea. So, <laughs> now, interesting, keynote speakers Hilary Hutchison, She's a Montana trout guide, fly shop owner, journalist and filmmaker yep. uh, about her family's passion for wild trout um, and how North America is recognising all the benefits of spending time in the great outdoors with the people you love. You're going to hear all about um, wild trout in Victoria, the surveys, results in streams. Martin Aldist is talking and hopefully he's bringing his son and uh, his son's going to have a fish on the Delatite River. Huh. Very good. While he's up there. Good old Marty. Absolutely. Marty's a good bloke. Um, all right, and one lucky last, uh, the Murray Codference, 2019 Murray Codference. Have a look at this. Uh, it's in Shepparton. There's all the details on your screen. Again, you must register. It's for free, Sunday 8th of December. If you uh, don't want to pay for accommodation, just go to Trolley's house. He's got an open <laughs> house that night. <laughs> Trolley, you can Come accommodate around. 230 people. That's right. Kind of cost you a slab of beer. Um, <laughs> Keynote address, Rob, Rob Paxavanis. Yep. Uh, and he's going to show his DVD. John Cahill, um, Dr. Brett Ingram, Graham Deer. Uh, plenty of good speakers there. Yeah. Conference, there you go. Nice. It's um, all on. There you go. That's Fisheries News for another week. Yep. Lots of events and lots of things to do when you're not fishing. That's right. So I'll be speaking at my house later on. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, just back on the cod. So old Don. Old he, he just trolls around a stump, and we just say yeah. he just trolls around yeah. a stump. He does put a few hours in, but it just goes to show you don't, you've got to be there right time, right place. Yep. There are some good codding like you on this You just can't ignore ways, proven, proven ways, to ways. Catch fish. That's time on the water. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, I think he was only, oh, I'm trying to remember the email he sent me, yeah. seven metres of water. Like, it wasn't that deep. Yeah, okay. Um, just trolling a tree line or something? Amongst or? the timber. Yeah. yeah. 
Nothing special, Trelly. No, no, and a lot of the times up there, you, you don't have to, like I say, the, the, the edges of the banks, because I did some electro fishing up there and some yeah. other forms of gathering cod information. Yeah. They weren't in that deep of water, and that's where they caught a lot of the fish. So They weren't? No, they weren't no, in that deep of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So <clears throat> cast your lure back, stick in the right holder, relax. Yeah. Yeah, you know, let your electric motor do the work mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Yeah, he's got a little yeah. eight-horsepower eight mercury that blue band, I think. And perfect. No, 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 yes, not really. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he's got a little eight-horsepower, he puts around. Yeah. Um, one of the things Don always says to me, though, is that the fish only bite when Eildon is filling, not emptying. Right, so when the flow yeah. in is greater than the flow out, mm. Don says that's when the cod bite. Rising mm. water level. Don't go there. And, and, I mean, you can only read that off the internet, so how the yeah. cod do that. Probably on well, their iPhones or something. Like it's about, but yeah, but they. It's been going down last week. <laughs> well, how do you know? No, it's about the same. I oh, watch. I oh, watch the you get on GM the Gold Murray water. Oh yeah, yeah. And you can see the. Well, water Don, Don's always got this theory though <coughs> mm. that if Eildon's filling, not emptying, that's when the fish will bite. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. I'd yeah. say he's, I'd say he's pretty right, but there's the exception to the norm. Oh, there's always the yeah. exception, but. Yeah, so Don is never wrong. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. Mm. It's like most of the fresh water. If you can yeah. get that rise, and you can be, you can be, thirty kilometres in front of a rise, but the fish know it's going to happen. So high tide. I don't know yeah. what it's about. The, it's like high tide. Yeah, like an incoming yeah. tide. About the, um, is it the hydrology of, for one of a better description? The, the water hydrology, like the oh, pressure yeah, yeah, of the water yeah, yeah. Yep. coming down, that type of thing, and then yeah. they'll bite before a rise. There okay. you go. Oh, Funny, eh? All righty, there you go. Uh, coming up next, product of the week, something to use at Upper Colburn Reservoir. Next, at talk on talking fishing. Talking fishing. Good morning, spotters. Stephanie speaking. Oh, I tell you what, they ne they say don't work with animals, children, or trelly. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, product of the week this week: something that you can use up at Upper Colliban Reservoir. Trelly, ooh, ooh, what? Ooh. A Milwaukee cordless grinder to get past the gate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think you're allowed to do that. Something a little, well, just, something a little no, less no, controversial. No, 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 what is this? Ads? Well, this is. The water snake electric motor designed for kayaks. Wow. Yes. So it is available in two different models. There's an 18 pound and a 24 pound, which is the one I'm holding here. Now, what what separates this electric motor from a lot of the ones that just go on a boat is this little arm right here. So oh, it's, hang on. What's the cords? <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sure it's fully powered. <laughs> Mm -hmm. These are one of the easiest electric motors you'll ever use for a kayak because as long as you've got some sort of flat surface, which 99% of kayaks do, you can mount that. It's just a small circle mount, yep. four screws, a little bit of silicon around that as well yep. to keep it in place, and that will go on any kayak. Um, Hurry up, I'm getting hot. <laughs> extension arm. <laughs> extension arm, everything is fully adjustable. Two speeds, full noise and, one, two. and walk. So What's really? I stand for? Yeah. So walk and and then you got reverse. Ah, for it race. Oh, it goes in reverse. Forwards, reverse, yep. and nothing. Hmm. Um, uh -huh. Neutral. Now, the hardest part to any electric motor in a kayak yep. is generally majority of the batteries to power it weigh more than the kayak. Yeah. So be mindful of that. And I think an electric motor in a kayak shouldn't. Don't pretend it's a boat motor. Yeah, don't try and water and ski gonna, with and your mates. And, yeah, yeah. and you're going to go from one end of the building to the other. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to happen <laughs> <laughs> because the batteries do get heavy and they end up being a lot heavier than your oh. entire rig. But it beats paddling. Yeah. 
Well, look, we saw in the image before, that's a great little setup. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we can get that back up. But and, and it can be, listen, great there's, little setup. there's so many ways that you can set up an electric motor mm. on your kayak. There's heaps mm. of different rigging yeah. options. But it, there's heaps of different brackets. But that, so but this bracket's side mounted, isn't that's it? That's right. So and then the tiller's right there. Well, Water Snake have just made it so insanely easy. It mm. is literally four screws yeah. or four bolts, and that's it. Yeah. So the, the arm can be adjusted. You can bring it closer to the kayak, further away from the kayak, adjustable arm, um, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, I'm Charlie, come, Charlie comes to power it up. We'll start the sweat. I'm going to have to take the, the yeah. negative and the positive <laughs> off. Yeah, oh, not no. expensive either. No, they're not. Um, depending, I think for the 24 pound, you're looking at around the $200 mark. Yeah. Um, with so the bracket. With the bracket. Oh. Yeah. Now you can you can buy the motor without. Yeah. The actual kayak um, bracket. So, as I said, there's heaps of different ways you can mm. rig up an electric motor on a kayak. It's hard to hang on to without the bracket. It is. <laughs> yeah, just hang on. <laughs> it is. Uh, great for Upper Colliburn River, Barker's yep. Reservoir, Malmesbury River Reservoir, right. all those ones Devil that the Bend. Premier sat here yep. and said he was going to open there. Yeah, that's right. I don't think they're that far away, some of them. Oh. No. Like the ones that aren't properly open with proper access. Charge your battery on solar and make sure it's not connected to any coal-fired plant because it'll be more Environmentally Quite friendly. <laughs> Up the collar vein people. Yeah, the only thing is that they had to mine all those elements to get into the solar panel trailer. Oh, I know. Anyway, it's all a farce. Yeah, that, that's even got one of those little things on here. Like, yeah, yeah, well, got that's, that. yeah, that's if your you level. Haven't got that, if you haven't got that, just know that. Little extendable handle. What's that? Handle. The handle if you don't want to use the extension. Yep. Oh, there you go. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to pack it away? No, we'll Are you going to hold that for the next Louis 10 minutes? Louis put it together, he can put it Louis put it together, I don't know how it works. <laughs> well, he, but are you guys going to hang on to it for the next 10 minutes? Oh, Trelly, yeah, that's okay. right. It's connected to his nipples, um, not mine. Well, some of the things we're going to talk about, Trelly, mm. yeah, you're, you come in a bit angry tonight. Oh, I did. <sighs> oh, it's yeah, worth was, talking about. Fault. I know it's not 100% fishing related. That was Mary's fault. There's a disaster. <laughs> There's a disaster going on up the bush, isn't there? Oh, that's a separate issue. Yeah. Um, oh, no. <laughs> there is, actually. I tell you, I, I, I actually... I, Get passionate. Yeah, I was. I'll tell you what. Um, the, the Minister for Parks, which is, we believe, is um, Ambrosio. Oh, Lily D'Ambrosio. Lily yeah. D'Ambrosio. i tell you what, yeah. Lily, you have got to do something about the removal of dead timber in the National Parks around Shepparton. Lower Goulburn National Park... And it's extending to Kenya Pella and also the Barma Forest. It's wholesale destruction of habitat trees. 300 year old habitat trees up there. And I know it's a fishing show, but I am so angry that there's been no effort, there's been no, um, uh, no effort basically to catch these people who are taking uh, firewood wholesale. The trees this big, honestly, they're bigger, they're this big, are just being cut down wholesale up that way and there has to be something done about it. These people are known criminals and they have to be stopped. It's just bullshit that they take away these old habitat trees. What are they trees, doing? They're cutting them down? Cutting them down and, and what? selling them selling them for firewood. To the firewood market? Yep, absolutely. It's just disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. The Victorian government haven't taken up the opportunity to catch these people and put them behind bars or... It's, so they, yeah, what are they doing? Just cruising, well, they're just cruising through the, the nighttime the cutting of firewood. Absolute disgrace. I went for a drive down here with Mary. Ten yeah. kilometres, you couldn't pick up a stick off the ground. There was not one standing dead tree for habitat. Yeah. Not one. That's just. They're an icon awful. of the bush in in Victoria, aren't they? The yeah. old river red gums that are hundreds of years old. They're yeah. dead. Yeah. But they just stand there, and they're just That's a beautiful right. icon of the bush. They are gone. They're they just are chopping gone them from, down from a lot of the, the lower Goulburn National Park. And um, but how? Can you how it, what, uh, okay, what? Why don't they go out and arrest them when they're doing it? Well, because the rangers aren't allowed to go out by themselves without without um, being accompanied by a policeman. Oh, they're H &S. understaffed. Yeah. Right? They've they've got the um, basically been told to stay away from these people because they're dangerous. Yeah, and it's just it's just wrong. So Absolutely. they just go there and so not take firewood. Yeah, so they just turn a blind eye to them then. Absolutely, they've got to turn a blind eye because they've been told by their superiors, by regional managers, not to do anything about. It. Wow. I'm angry about it, really angry. Yeah, That's been go. going for a long time. Our, our local guy up there, I believe he's put in something like 120 or 150 um, reports of stolen, of, 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 of these incidents people, happening, people. Yeah. Taking, taking illegal firewood. Wow. So, Minister for uh, Parks, if you'd like to give me a call, because I haven't got your number directly, because you don't want to give it to me, give me a call at Trellies in Shepparton. I want to talk to you. Fair dinkum. There you go. Yep. Good, good stuff. Um, Ads, just a, uh, on, a, on a side note, 
calamari. So pe- I know people have turned on to the snapper and still a few people on the whiting because mm-hmm. the whiting's so good in that. But now is still the time where those big calamari are around. Yes. And, uh, you know, they're, they're doing their thing this time of year. There's still some great places down in Queenscliff. Um, the entrance to Swan's ba- Swan Bay is a great place. Anywhere along the um, those deeper parts of Port Phillip Bay from Rye onwards. Yeah, well, great the, places, aren't they? The key to the big calamari is tide. Mm. And you have a look at the, I guess, the hot spots for big calamari in mm. Western Port and Port Phillip Bay. Mm. They're always in tide. So you have a look at somewhere like Flinders. Yep. It's as tidal as it gets. Yeah. Um, Queenscliff, Swan Bay, uh, massively tidal. Massively mm. tidal. They, they push up into those shallow weed beds to spawn. That spawn is, is still going on and, and it will continue Right through, right through spring yep. uh, until the water temperature does get, get warm and, and then the cycle starts. We, mm. we start to see those eggs hatch and there's, uh, there's our, you know, a boom in squid population for mm. the next 12 months. Mm. So bear in mind uh, these southern calamari only have a 12-month lifespan. They die. They die. They will spawn mm. and, and move on. They grow very <coughs> quick. And seriously, any yep. shallow weed bed in a highly tidal area, I guarantee you there'll be big spawning calamari yeah, and they yeah. can be caught. Yeah. Yep. Um, the influence of, and, and this goes, I guess, for soft plastics as well as squid jigs, things like Egimax spray, yeah. S Factor. Yep. How important is it to use those sort of things when you're fishing this time of year? It, listen, it, it is important. Now, I'm, I'm a massive believer in any scent, in any mm. form of fishing. Don't expect it to turn a zero fish day into a bag out. Yeah. It's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. But it can be the difference between a donut session yep. mm. and two or three fish. Yeah. Now, whether it's a brim or a calamari yeah, or, yeah. or whatever, don't expect it to completely flip circumstances on its head, but it could be the difference between leaving with nothing and leaving with a feed. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you always have right, some actually, sort of sense. So these Japanese doing this new, this, well, it's always new, but this... Yeah, right, yeah. It, it depends on the squid jig. And then the, the other one's the... It depends on the squid jig. Not every squid jig is designed to be worked really, really hard. Some squid mm. jigs are designed solely to be worked that hard. Mm. Yep. Um, start a conversation with the staff in your local tackle shop. Yep. Because it, it's a simple thing that yep. can be made very complicated, but can also work against you if you're not yeah. using the right yeah. jigs. And yep. the big box stores can't do it. You've got to go to your local tackle shop. No, no yep. good going to the checkout jig. No. There you go. Coming up next, Kramer's Mailbag. There's a heap of it. Plenty more next on Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wear the line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Bit of mailbag tonight, boys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Serious stuff. Well, I uh, oh, no, this is this is good. Uh, this is from uh, Albert. Now, Albert is the president of the Real Phillip Island Angling Club. Mm-hmm. All right, Albert. He writes, uh, hi, David and team. Firstly, congratulations are in order for your excellence at the 2019 Antenna Awards and, of course, the show's fifth birthday. Thank you very much, Albert. Thank you, Albert. Next, I want to let you know that your comments last week concerning <laughs> consultation with angling clubs and boat ramp upgrades are not consistent with my own experience. Oh, it's the first time I've ever been proud to be wrong. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if it's wrong, <laughs> no. Well, it's good gross. if we're wrong because yeah, we right. were talking about um, we were talking about Coronella and yep. how it's a disaster. Yep. I, there was someone in the shop on Sunday, this this guy, and he just said, "I will not be ever launching at Coronella yeah. while it's set up how it is. It's a disaster, mm. and he just can't go there." Now that's not bit of both. Yeah, let's see what Albert has to say. Yeah. So anyway, um, representing the real Philip Island. Angling Club, I had the opportunity to share the knowledge of our members, local stakeholders and visitors with Better Boating Victoria and believe we are on track for a successful project. My only suggestion 
to facilitate these projects is to get involved and don't wait for the phone to ring or an email to arrive. Talk to people and reach out to VR Fish, to Better Boating Victoria, and your local shire to represent your boating and angling community. We're hosting Better Boating Victoria this Friday. Well, that was part of the, yep. what we were doing before, Fisheries News, um, to share the vision about the possibilities. Thanks to Catherine for organising it all, Charlie and the broader team at Better Boating Victoria. Finally, speaking about reaching out, I just wanted to ask if you could remind our members who are all keen viewers of Talking Fishing, about this weekend's fishing competition, 23rd, 24th of November, for the Bill Wallace Trophy and the $5,000 in prize incentives for extraordinary catches. Nice. Members only, first to catch, comp weekends only details on the website at rpiac.com. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thanks for that, Albert. Good to hear. All that, about the consultation. Uh, people yep. are praising Better Boat in Victoria for it, so that's good. Um, next one. This is from John. Hi fellas, great show as usual. Just wanted to share with it with you a pic of Patterson River boat ramp. I've noticed a decline in the upkeep of the ramps. We've got some photos here. Um, uh, I hope it's not because they're free. Uh, this is net ramp number three. I've been using these ramps for over 30 years and never have I seen the place in such a mess. What's that on there? Well, that's weed. Sea cabbage. Yeah, don't know if you'd eat it. Um, I had to use this more shallower ramp number two as I couldn't launch it number three. As can be seen in the picture, there is a dead possum. I think <laughs> in the next, there's a, oh. that's what a dead possum looks like. Yeah, ring tail. Been, yeah, it is a ring <laughs> tail. <laughs> uh, badly, uh, a dead possum badly decomposed, so it's been there a while. So my question is who is responsible for keeping the joint clean? As you don't break your bloody neck launching your boat. I also know we have some crap weather during the early part of the week, so whatever whoever is in charge has plenty of time to clean it up. Well, I can tell you. Yeah, can we? I say, can we yeah. touch on that topic later on in the show? Yeah, I've got a few but I'll tell you, too. Catherine had it cleaned up today. Nice, oh, yeah. there you go. So, so what did she? Straight onto it. If you're a possum, do it daytime. Don't do it nighttime. <laughs> I'll run over. Clean it up. You want to come back to that? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, next one, Kramer. Thank you for your wonderful program. Sometimes, as a viewer. I don't know if the episode I am watching is this week's or last week's or an older one. Oh. I'll tell you this one's live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it won't be when it's repeated. Oh, sorry. Like in July. That's oh, true. Um, I suggest that you place a sign on the back of the wall. Dated. With the date. We need a date showing, clock. Showing the date the episode was recorded or something similar. <clears throat> this is from Beatty mm. from Seabrook. Where's Seabrook? I don't know, but we need a, we need a mm. date clock. Yeah, do you think we should ones. do that? It's not a well, bad idea. It isn't a bad do, idea. I'll do it like Roman numerals, and I'll change the rods in the background, right? You change the rods during every... <laughs> to the do people at home <laughs> know that you coding. change the rods during every ad break? I don't know. I haven't had a letter yet, but... Uh, no, yeah, but you might have them up badly in the last that. ad break. The crew came in and tied yeah. them up. That's that plane's a bit messy. Yeah. Trelly changes the rods <laughs> over my right shoulder uh, during every, <laughs> every ad break of his life. Nobody's noticed. You know all I can say? Small things amuse small minds. <laughs> that's all I can say. I don't know why he does it, but he does it. All right. Uh, oh, this is from Warren. Now, this this is a really good one, this one. Yep. All right. Uh, some thoughts in response to the discussion last night, which was last week. Oh. Re sharing fish court where one angler outfishes the other. Do you remember oh, we were talking yeah, about bad weeks? Yes. That yep. caused a bit of controversy, I can tell you. Yep. Yep. A lot of people were talking about that. Yep. Situation as currently stands is that we are currently, uh, we currently fish under individual bag limits, not a boat limit. Maybe we need to get a boat limit that is worded as boat limit equals the number of anglers times the species bag limit. When I take the kids out, oh. we get a similar situation where if it is quiet, the kids will be in the cabin playing until a fish is hooked then come out flying, trying to take the rod out of the hands of whoever is holding it. If one hands off the rod, whose bag does the fish go into currently? Mm. The above boat limit wording would help here as well. And I'm sure Travis is watching yeah. as he's parksy, and um, I'm sure they're going to sort this one I think it's probably out. in the spirit of the, of the idea of a yeah. personal, because your, your boat can only take yeah. so much anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think, think. I, I don't think this is in direct reference to what happened we were talking no, about last week. No, just in that general people, grey area. Because those people were multi-tripping. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And to yeah. me, I think they should have been pinged for multi-tripping. Yeah. But pinging them for... But you're right, it's all about context and the spirit for, of what they're doing. Yeah, it's the he spirit. got 14 and the wife yeah, only got 6. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's harsh, I reckon. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you fix that regu regulatory wise, yeah. but. Um, yeah, I reckon well, you're spot Travis on. Travis next time he's in. I reckon you're spot yeah. on there. Yeah. Have a look at the situation. Well, you do. You've got to say, well, you know, that if there's, there's three of you in a boat, there's, a, there's obviously a, a three times bag limit. Yeah. And that's the management systems that's put in place. So whether one catches more, I'm not saying that. What they're technically you know, saying, Charlie, is that's thing, not right, though. Yeah. Only let, well, one person's only allowed to get 10. And then stop If the next person gets two yeah. and the next person gets one, you're only, only allowed to take home 13. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, but there's still a boat can only mm. have a managed number of fish. Mm. Well, it, yeah, it, there is no, that's, there's no number on that, though. It's just the bag well, limit individual. In yeah, it's something that should right. change, do you think? As in they should incorporate, so oh, they it, should incorporate a boat limit so that regardless of how many people on the boat, you can only take, say the boat limit for calamari was 20. Yeah. If you've got three people on the boat, they're now 60. no longer entitled to 10 each. Because the boat limit's only 20. The boat limit's only... Oh, no. No, Warren's suggesting the boat limit is the, is the bag limit times the amount of anglers. Yeah, regardless, regardless of who catches, who catches them. them. Yeah. I yeah, mean, which, that's a common sense but, thing, I think. And yeah. I many people will argue that the boat limit should be a little bit less, less. if you've got six people on board. Yeah. And people have written to us about the pippy yeah. people that go... Well, what about the charter industry? That would yeah. that mm. would hurt them massively. Mm. Mm. There's whispers it's about the charter industry wanting to uh, be regulated. That's not a bad thing. Have yeah. a charter licence. There's just dis there's some discussions going on, yep. apparently, yeah. within the charter industry. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? You pull up two guys in the middle of Port Phillip Bay yeah. Yeah. and they've got so many species that only lives 12 months. Well, that's the way yeah. I've always looked at Does it. it. Now, whether really that's matter. right or wrong. Doesn't really matter. No. No. Other species might be different. So. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Parks would be having a heart attack right now. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, and lucky last, g'day, Mr. Kramer. Mr. Ring. Oh, what have we done? And the other old bloke down the end. Oh, hello. That's, I'm just reading as it says here. <laughs> I mentioned you twice. Yeah. <laughs> Way older than you. Uh, down the end, just want to find out what's happened to the female ramp off. Bloody hell. Oh, I thought that had go. gone. We realised there was too I many females who can back a trailer better than yeah. us. Um, has it been put to rest and forgotten about? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everybody wants to find out who will take out the title of Miss Ramp Off. Yeah. Will it be held. Mm. Regards Anatoly. Yeah, and you're only allowed to do it in the third gear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's forget about it. Uh, <laughs> coming out next, the all-important hotspots next on Talking Fishing. Oh, sorry, i got to wrap up. Oh, they're yelling at me. You I've always forget this I bit. I always forget that bit because it's not written on the screen. <laughs> um, if you write, want to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you have to do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria, 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au Not that I would ever read off the screen. <laughs> over there. Um, coming out next on Talking Fishing, Hot Spots. See you soon. Talking Fishing G'day, Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramer. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance-free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for Hotspots, brought to you by Seamaster Batteries. Just before we get to Hotspots, big show next week too. Um, got to be done. There's a, or well you won't be here. I won't be here. No, but we've got a couple of special guests in the studio. There's a new app. That is going to be launched. Yeah, I'm spilling. I'm going to miss this. This is big. Yeah. Like, you might just get. You might just go. This good. is an app. It's an app. What's an app? Who cares yeah. about an app? No. It's, um, this this sounds is, real good. This is big. Don't worry. It's a big show yeah. next week, and uh, we're going to try and do some live interaction and all that sort of stuff on next week. Mm -hmm. Charlie will probably stuff it right up. <laughs> You'll swear again. Oh golly. Um, could happen. Yeah, could happen. But anyway, Passionate. all right. Talk about that in a minute. Um, Altona, number one, up that northern end of the bay, the water, like we were talking about before, yeah, yeah, yeah. has actually dipped a bit, 15, 16 degrees parts yeah. of the bay, but the top end, Altona, great warm water up there and uh, plenty of snapper about. Boys. Yeah, generally fish a bit shallow too. There's some shallow reef in there and that yep. sort of yeah. nine, 10 metre mark, so great you, place to throw a plastic around to. Go and see the boys at Laverton Trelly and they'll right. put you on the bay. spot, hey? Uh, they will actually, they're, they're great. And if you come from the bottom end of the bay, yep. you fish for snapper with your whiting rod up the top end of the bay because you've got no 
tide run, no basically. Tide. There you go. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. You're right. Uh, as we saw in Catch of the Week earlier on, some fantastic fish being caught off Mount Eliza. That's our next Had hot to be spot. In there. Had Absolutely. To be in there. Ansets, if you don't know what Ansets is, it is where... Sir Reginald Ansett had a lovely holiday house ah, okay. on the shores of Mount Eliza, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a big school there, like a nunnery or the, whatever they call it. And, the and uh, anyway, you can see it. Ansett's big property there. Nice. Ansett was oh, he built that, but he had the house next to it. So yeah, Ansett, that's where it comes from. Hastings uh, is the next one over in Western Port. No further than go out the channel, mm. turn left, yeah. head towards Lysarts. Yeah. And uh, just find yourself a spot 18 to 20 Lysart. metres. Are you going to get all offended that it's called Lysart? No, it's blue scope yeah. steel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, Hastings is the is that is the go. Top end of Westerport is the next one. The Boucher Channel. Is that how you say it? Boucher. I don't know. Spell it yeah, funny. Yeah, Boucher. It's, it's always confused me this one. I reckon we just say Boucher because it's easier to say. Bo- mm-hmm. Boucher. Yeah. Boucher. Someone, Bouchier. Someone all. Bouchier. Yeah. <laughs> be French for channel or yeah. something like that. So. <laughs> Um, French for snapper. Yeah, there you go. But anyway, fishing really, really well. People uh, get to Find that. Find some schoolies out there um, too. If these schoolies are starting to fire up, you'll get a few up in the shallows. Yeah, yeah. Generally, the smaller and models. Great yep. place when it's blowing a bit north. Yeah. Um, mm, which, which we've got next few days. Run outside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now this is an unusual one, Trelly. Yeah. When to say, some. To some, to some. But uh, you know, if we're going to say a hot spot this weekend yep. for yellow belly, yep. it's not normally this place. No. But have a look at this. Right in the heart of Melbourne, where they run the F1 Grand Prix, yep. Albert Park Lake. There is some lovely yellow belly coming out of Albert Park Lake at the moment. There's some rippers in there. What's the best way some to fish that, Charlie? Some crackers in there. Um, little it, lures. You can actually use little spinner baits or little bibless lures, yep. like the little jackals and, yep. and things like that. Um, baits, baits always a good one too. And, and fish them with finesse, like let them have plenty of run. You know, mm. don't give me any resistance as far as when you're fishing for yellow belly yep. and, and put up. But, but um, you know, young bloke Ross when he was down here doing uni, you know, he'd go down and catch some, some big fish. Yeah, yeah. Because there is um, some giant yellow belly there. Yeah, yeah, Dylan, who works in the Aladdin store, he's there the other day and he caught some big yellow belly. It's awesome. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, Mr. Anthony Forster would say fish at yeah. dusk. Yep. Okay. Is the key. Mm. Mm. When that light starts to get low. Yeah. Uh, it's the best time. It nice. gets stocked and there's some rippers in there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Think it's, it's I, I reckon it's yeah. probably the, the longest stocked. Yeah. One, one of the longest stocked yeah, lakes really. in Victoria yeah. would be Albert Park Lake with the Yellow yep. Belly. So it's yeah. been going on for decades. Excellent. So, And lucky last, as we saw 70 year old young Don mm-hmm. Newman, Donnie caught, Newman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get up to Lake Eildon because um, jumpers. The, the, it's starting yeah. to warm the cotter on. Yep. It's still it's open season all year round. You've got to yep. let them go because it's still have the slot limit. Good. But yep. Lake Yildon, Murray Cod, that's the place to go. Get amongst that's it. Right. Hey, um, Dave, I quickly want to bring something up that yep. we was briefly touched on in Mailbag before we wrap up mm. tonight. We seem to be getting a lot of mail, and you and I, and Trell, you probably do yeah. too, um, in, at Geelong and Laverton. We get asked a lot what's going on with the maintenance of boat ramps. Mm. Mm. Is, like, the Patterson River one was interesting to me because Paddo's had a long history of when there's something wrong with the ramp, it gets fixed pretty quick. Yep. What's the protocol now? Who's looking after the maintenance? Because it seems to be a little bit mm. in limbo. Like, mm. are, the, are the councils and shires looking after it? Are better boating looking after it? Are we transitioning into something that's not happening? And are the councils and shires going, well, if you're not, we're not going to take any money off you and we're not going to make anything out of it, mm. I'll tell you where you can jam your maintenance. Yeah, but the, yeah. the problem is, though, they, they are actually getting the same amount of money. They're being compensated from the boat licence and boat rego. So but are they forced to use it to maintain the upkeep of those rounds, know. or can they pocket the money yeah. and throw it into something else? I don't know, but they're, expect, do they're expected to maintain the boat ramp to a standard. Yeah. And what we're seeing, I mean, old Tom wrote in last week yeah. uh, down at Tootgarook that there was a metre of sand on the boat ramp. Now, yeah. this, this isn't July. This is no. November. Because in theory, yeah. if they're being compensated for it, shouldn't it technically be the easiest it's ever been for them to get the maintenance done on the ramps. The money's there. They don't have to find it Mm. from their Mm. own funds or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't it it be the easiest? So who who looks after that? Whoever has been managing it forever Mm. should be doing it right now. There's, there's, I think, I don't know the the, the 100%, but I think there's a one year, um, you know, thing in in process where um, the, the, the existing managers have to manage it, but there is a big review going on by Deloitte. And they're, yep. they're looking at what's the maintenance requirements, what are the standards at every boat ramp. Mm. They're looking at all that right now. It's a comprehensive review. Mm. I think there will be uh, some sort of a public paper out within the next week okay. about all mm. this. So 
and where they ask for the public for some comments. So there is stuff go there is stuff going on oh, to try and absolutely, make it easier. Absolutely, absolutely. Because it just mm. seems as though, mm. yeah, no, you know exactly. what I mean? It, it, in theory, everything should be really easy to get mm. the maintenance done. Yet we're seeing things, and it is a hot topic. So we're going to hear about it one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. But it seems as though it's kind of heading in the right mm. direction, but not. Yeah. Like it should be really well, easy. Well, some of those ramps that need a lot of maintenance, and like Tookarook is yeah. one of them because you just get a, a bit of a, a north, easterly, northwest that just yeah, blows just the, the sand, sand up. Yeah. But, yeah, that's right. But you know what? They, that's their job, maintain yeah. a boat ramp. That's so right. if they've got to go yeah. there with a tractor three times a week, Do so it, be especially it. Especially yeah. in season. You clearly, a, you clearly can't leave it up to the ring tile possums. No. <laughs> no, 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 no <laughs> well, at no. least they're but, trying. But they, you know, what, they, they are. The facts of the matter are they're a public asset. They're owned by the public. They're not owned by the bloke who runs the foreshore committee. Yeah. They're not owned by the council. They yeah. are owned by the people of Victoria, and yeah. those people represent the people of Victoria yeah. to manage the assets. Yeah. And that's not just like three, people, doing, so. three people a year are using them. Like they're very busy. It's November, not July, and um, people need to get on it. But I think this time in one year, there may be a very different setup. Yeah, cool. So it's, really everything's good. pushing in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. That's it for Talking Fishing. We hope you enjoyed the show. Next week, as we said, we are joined in the studio by the head of Maritime Safety Victoria to launch a new boating app. I've seen the draft version. It is big. It launches this Thursday, and we'll run you through it step by step next week. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son. <laughs>